Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of All. In this video we're going to have a look at a different workflow for making curved objects. So recently I was making this shape. You might recognise it depending on what you're into in terms of a hobby, but importantly it's made up of a lot of different straight and curved edges and I needed to make this for some very specific sizing. Now what's interesting about this if I go into vertex mode is that this has pretty much a perfect quad mesh, in fact it is a perfect quad mesh, with really nice equal sizing on each edge. And importantly, I didn't use sub D to create this. Now before we get any further, I want to caveat this video to say I'm not saying that sub D doesn't work, or that it's rubbish, or that this is better for sub D and you should always use this methodology. That is very much not what I'm saying. I really want to highlight that I think doing this in sub D, if you just wanted to make a generic shape that looked a bit like this, would probably be faster as opposed to the method I'm going to show you. Not that this method is particularly slower, but it had some important positives to it which I really needed for this project. So I'm just going to G and Y this to the side, and we'll quickly talk through why sub D didn't work for this project. So I'll just speed through making the general cube shape for this and then adding in a crease to all of the edges. If you aren't particularly confident on a sub D workflow, I've got a link in the description where I go through some different elements of that. So feel free to give that a watch. And for this project, importantly, once we do that, we can easily add in things like an edge loop, and then that's gonna allow us to create an arc shape just by moving some of those vertices out. So we can definitely use sub D to create arc shapes. There's not a particular issue with that. However, this is where the first problem for me arose with using sub D, and that is because while we can control the arc that we've got here, the issue is that I can't set this point to a specific distance from higher on the z-axis than the vertices either side. For example, I need to know this thickness. So that's going to be a problem with this project. Now I could start trying to trace this out using other objects to set the distance, but that's a bit of a faff. The other issue is that I've got this point here where I need to have a flat edge and we can do that with a subdivision surface again. We can just bring in an extra edge loop and then change where that's positioned. But this has another problem, which is when we apply it, because we've now got an additional edge that's bisecting this, the subdivision surface is going to make these uneven sized faces. So they're not gonna be exactly the same. And that's not what I want. I want this to be a bit more uniform. So this wasn't really working for me. So in that case, what did I use? Well, firstly, I'm gonna use one paid add-on for this. Now, that is only because I very specifically needed that arc at a certain dimension, which I mentioned earlier, and construction lines will allow me to do that. So I did use a paid for add-on. I've got a video on construction lines. It's in the description if you want to have a look at it. And I do like construction lines for a number of reasons. And effectively, what I did is I used construction lines to create a frame for this object to go onto. And then from there, I started fleshing it out. Now, I'm not going to say this is perfect again, but actually when you know some workflow tricks, this is really quick and easy to manipulate and it gets everything done that you want to. So I'm just going to hide that for a second and then we'll start having a look at what I did. So we'll come into side view, go into construction lines. We've got a draw arc menu or option, which is what I needed to use. And I'm just going to click and then this is where we can select the exact size of our arc. So for example, if I knew this is meant to be one millimeter high, I can just type in one. You can see that in the top left hand corner and then hit enter and this is now one tool. And then I can use things like the line tool if I wanted to, to draw things like the bottom. So I'm just gonna grab that draw line and do that, let's say here to here at this point. And then at this point I can start moving things around so for example, I actually want this, let's just select and go into vertex mode and then G and then Y that across. We can, let's say E to extrude this out again on the Y axis. So let's keep that there. I'm gonna E and then Z to constraint to the Z axis. And we've got this part of that object here though I'm actually gonna go into face mode and select that and that and then X and delete out only the faces. So we've got those done there. And then I can come into side view and then go into vertex mode. And then once again, construction lines, arc tool. And I'm going to, let's say, click there and there. And then I'm going to press the Y to constrain to the Y axis. I don't want that very much. 
Now you can also, if you want to, hold down control and scroll up to change the amount of segments. So I'm just gonna to go to, I don't know, 15. I can't actually remember what I did and then click. And then to move these top parts, so what I'm gonna do is just select those, Shift and D, so we've come out of construction lines there. I can select that and that, and then just press F to fill it. And then if I want to, I can come back into construction lines to construct this part. Oh, that didn't select everything, but that's all right. We're gonna mirror this or symmetrize it anyway. So let's come back here, and then if I come to construction lines and then arc, so then I can click there, to here, click, and then I want to constrain this on the Y. Let's click there. And yeah, this is being clever and created a face. I don't actually want that face here. So what I'm gonna do is come out of construction lines, go into face mode, select that, delete, and then only the face. And then I'm actually gonna delete that and that, and then X, and then only the face there as well. And then let's just symmetrize this. So I'm gonna use Mesh Machine for this and symmetrize it over, but you could easily do that by just going to Mesh and then symmetrize. So I only really use this for the arcs. You could do the arcs in other ways if you wanted to. But what we've got now is this nicely traced out shape. Now what I'm gonna do is just select those and then turn on my auto merge vertices, GG those across so that we don't have any vertices in the middle. And then we can talk about what I did now to flesh this out. So I can start dealing with adding in the points to create this even mesh. And what I want to do is make this so we've got relatively equal spacing to over here. This is far too wide. So what I'm gonna do is just select those two vertices, control and E, and I'm gonna subdivide that. And I think there probably looks about right. That seems relatively equal to that side. Then, and this is gonna be the important part, I want to make sure that there's the same number of vertices there as there are here. So what I'm gonna do is come up to my viewport overlays and then I'm going to select statistics and now I can select there and it's gonna tell me that I've got 16 vertices. And then I can come here and I've also got 16 vertices. So this has actually worked out pretty good. Now, what I'm gonna do is suggest that we've got a problem here. This hasn't worked out as perfect as 16 vertices and 16 vertices. So what I'm gonna do is actually just control and X, let's say that one out. Okay, so we don't have 16 vertices here. Um, I don't know why this would happen like this with this big gap, but let's just say it has. I'm just gonna GG and move that up a bit. So we've got something like that. So all I'm gonna do, if I want to solve this, so notice I've got 15 vertices here. I need to have 16 is just select those two, control and E and then subdivide it. And then I can just click there to there and then We've got this problem that they're looking, well, horrible because of this bunched up part. So all I can do is N, come to my edit menu, and as long as you've got loop tools activated, this comes with Blender, just go to edit preferences, add-ons, and then loop tools. I can then just click space, and now they're equally spaced. Now I want to do the same thing along these edges. So let's just select that edge and that edge, control and E, and I'm gonna subdivide that. So let's say, I don't know, four or five times. Something about there looks right. Then I can set this exactly the same way with these edges here. So there, there, there. I want those to have the same number of vertices as here. So notice I've got 13 vertices. Here I've got 13 vertices. So if I go into edge mode and select there, there, and there, and control and E, and then subdivide, I want a total of 13. So I need to cut that 11 times. So I go into vertex mode, I've now got 13 vertices at each of these points. Let's just Alt and X to copy these bits over to the other side. So I'm gonna Alt and X and symmetrize. You again don't need Mesh Machine to do that. So you can just go to Mesh and then symmetrize. And that has basically traced all of this out. And now all we need to do is just select some opposite edges. So for example, there to there. So each side we select as a whole, Control and F and then Grid Fill. And you can see we get this nice smooth fill in that area. Go back into vertex mode. Let's do that here as well. So we've got there and then there. Control and F and then grid fill. And then we can use this on our larger sides as well. So there, there, control and F, grid fill. And then here I'm going to do this there. Control and F and then grid fill. In fact, let's just see, I did that individually, but I wonder if I can do this as a whole thing there. 
Control and F and then grid fill. Yep, no, that didn't like it. Look, we've got a problem there. So let's not do it that way. So select there to there and then there to there. And then grid fill and then same there to there, there to there. Control and F and then grid fill. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom. So there to there and there to there, control and F and then grid fill. And then we've got that sorted and then we can either symmetrize or we could do exactly the same thing here. And you can see we've got our shape. Now, what's great about this is that it has got this, as we said, perfectly even geometry here. Okay, there's no difference between the size of the mesh here and here, or it is really minorly different. We've got relatively even geometry on all sides. So this just gives a really, really nice effect. Now, if we do want to, we can actually smooth this out further. I can just go to the edges and select all of the major large edges that we've created. Shift and E, and I could, if I want to, still add in a subdivision surface. Let's control and three and get this nice smooth shading. But we know that this subdivision surface now is gonna create a relatively even mesh because the faces are equal in size. I also know that I've got this specifically sized to what I need it to be. So, as I said, this is not a perfect workflow. It definitely takes longer than creating this by using a subdivision surface, but it does allow for some really exact sizing and some very nice equal topology. Now, I should probably end this by pointing out that actually by the end of this, this was going to be a vastly more complex object where you've got a lot more to this and a lot more internal shape that was going to be really, really tricky to potentially make. And this tracing method made this actually very, very simple and get actually correct in terms of the sizing. But it was just actually quite a nice process just tracing everything out. Now, just to give you an idea of how well this worked, you can see that this is the actual 3D print of this and this very specific plastic part that had to go in the middle and be able to move around. And I have to smugly say that was on a first print without having to change anything around because this sizing just works so well. So what do you think of this? Let me know in the comments. You might absolutely despise this and think I'm an absolute moron for wasting my time and yours for the video. Feel free to vent. If you thought this is something that you might actually find useful at points, also please say, I think this has a lot of potential for certain curved objects, for example, cars, but very importantly, it gives you a lot of control over the mesh and in many ways more control than you get by using a subdivision surface. But again, at a slight sacrifice of speed. As always, if you found that useful, it'd be really appreciated if you liked the video. And if you do want to watch one of those other videos on construction lines, they're in the description and there'll be one coming up at the end of the video as well if you're not on your mobile. Have a great day, guys.